Shalom, Shalom. Today I want to talk about the definition or the understanding or actually even the misunderstanding of sin and what, what sin actually is. The reason why I choose this specific topic is because most of us do not know what sin is. We have different understanding and different views about the topic sin um, or the subject sin. And that is why so many of us don't even know when we commit a sin that we are actually in transgression. If I ask anyone what sin is, most of the time the answer that we normally get is sin or a sinner is somebody that does not attend church. Or they will say a sinner is someone that drinks alcohol. Or they would even tell you a sinner is somebody that does not want to do anything in a church setting. Like for example, you don't want to sing in a worship team, but you have the voice for it. Or you don't want to be involved in anything in the church. You just want to be what they call a bench warmer. But none of those things are actually sin. It doesn't make you a sinner if you do not want to be active in church. If you don't want to sing in a worship team, attend mid midweek service or do any fundraiser with the church, that does not make you a sinner. Or even drinking alcohol, that doesn't make you a sinner. What does make you a sinner according to the Bible? Remember that when we talk about the scriptures, we have to come out of what the Bible actually say a specific thing is or isn't. So the Bible actually give us a proper definition of what sin is. And we'll get it. So let's start at 1 John chapter 3 and we'll start at verse 4. So it says, Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So this verse is actually giving us the direct and clear example of what sin is, the definition of sin. The Bible says that if you go against the laws of God, you are a sinner. But that is not what we were taught when we grew up or even now when you find yourself asking anyone what sin is. We normally look at somebody or the individual that is not in the church and we look at them as a sinner. I remember back in the day when I was still in church, people would say, or the pastor would say, bring, your, um, bring a visitor. So if you bring the visitor, that person then becomes part of the church because the visitor is, is those individuals or are those individuals that actually do not attend church. But that doesn't make you a sinner. The sin is when you go against what the Bible say you should do and should not do. Right, so let's get a few examples. If you go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 4, and we'll start at verse 4. Matthew 4, verse 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not love by bread alone. So it's not just you filling your stomach with food, getting a McDonald's burger or a pizza or even a Steers burger, or just having a normal meal, just filling your, 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 your stomach. That is not just the only thing that's going to keep you alive or sustain you. The Bible says, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So every word that comes out of the mouth of God, that is what we should live by. So now you should be asking yourself, what are those words that we need to live by? There are certain things that the Most High spoke um, and He gave commandments and He gave instructions. We should follow them. Because those are every word, not some words, not just men shall love by things written in the New Testament, every single word. So let's see where he's quoting this from. Let's get the precept, it's in um, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy sorry, chapter 8, and we'll start at verse 3. I'll, I'll jump to the middle just to get to the point of what this verse is actually saying. It, say, it says that ye may make thee know then men do it not love by bread only. So this is what Yahweh Shai is quoting. It says, by, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh does men love by. So every single word that comes out of the mouth of the Most High Yahweh, that is what we need to love by. Let's see what are some of the things that he spoke about. Exodus chapter 20. And we'll start at verse 1. 
because we need to see where he spoke and what he spoke. Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is clear. So this is actually where we find the Ten Commandments. If you didn't know, this is where you can find the Ten Commandments. It goes into a list of things that we, that we should do and things that we can't do. But it's words spoken by the Most High Himself. Let's get another example. Let's go to the book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts that shall be eaten among all the beasts that are, on, um, that are on the earth. So these are now a list of animals that can be eaten. Um, and animals that cannot be eaten. If you go into that specific chapter, you'll see the breakdown. It lets you know what you can eat and what you cannot eat. If we go to the book of Leviticus, the same chapter, and go down to verse 46, it says, this is the law of the beasts. So there's a law of what can be eaten. This is the law of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Then it says in verse 47, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So there are unclean animals and there are clean animals that can be eaten and that should not be eaten. Then it says, and between the beast that may, may be eaten um, and the beast that may not be eaten. So if you look at anything like a pig for an example, and this is a touchy subject for most people, but it's actually listed in verse number 8. So Exodus 11 verse 8, it says, and the swine, I'll start at verse 7, it says, and the swine, though he divide the wolf and be cloven-footed, yet he chew it not the cud, he is unclean to you. So there's a difference between clean and unclean animals. It says of their flesh unclean to you. So there's a difference between clean and unclean animals. It says of their flesh shall you not eat, neither their carcass shall you touch. They are unclean to you. So yes, people normally would say that, but God made all the animals. He made everything. We can eat anything. Think about what you're saying. If you can eat anything, then you can eat people as well, because God made everything. If you say that you can eat anything, you can eat a hyena, you can eat a vulture, you can eat whatever, dogs, cats, but we know a normal person does not do these things. So it all depends on how you take God at, at His word. And for me, it is so, um, it's so strange when people say, I believe in the Word of God. The Word of God is true, right? I believe in everything that He say. But then that same person with that same mouth will tell you, I don't believe in the Old Testament anymore. But they just said every word of God is true. I believe in the Bible. Some even say um, you should listen to or take instruction from all the books in the Bible. All 66, even though there's not 66, there's 80 books. But we'll go with that example. Some of them say you should adhere to every single book in the Bible. Didn't Yahweh Shai say that he comes in the volume of the book? That is in Psalms 40 verse 8. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. So if he's in, in, in the volume of the book, means the entire book. And we know that John 1, 1, 1 verse 1 says that, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was what God, and that Word became flesh. Yahweh Shai is that Word that became flesh. So these are a couple of examples as, as to things where the Most High speak. Those are the things that we need to live by. Those are the things that we need to adhere to. If you call yourself a Christian, you need to listen to what these words are saying. If you go to the book where everybody loves, everybody loves this guy, Paul. 
Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death. So if you continue to commit sin, that's your work. You are committing that work and with that work comes a reward. And what is the reward? The reward is death. So all of us want to make it into the kingdom. If you are a Christian, you want to make it into the kingdom of the Most High. If you don't make it or if you don't keep the commandments of the Most High, Listen to what Matthew 7 and verse 22 say. Matthew 7 verse 22. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? Have I not casted out devils in thy name? And in thy name done many wonderful works. There's a lot of people that's going to say that one day. They're going to say, but I was, I was a faithful tither. I was in church every Sunday. I was in church midweek services. Every time the pastor called on me, I was there. I used to give my best and I used to give my all. What is the most high or what is his son going to say? Look at verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Just imagine you serve the most high God for years and years, maybe even all your life. Because that's where most of us started. We all started with Sunday school and then you go to youth and then you go into wherever, either singing in the worship team or being part of the choir or part of the committee or just getting involved in church. Just imagine you've done all that and not make it. So just imagine the, the son of the most High tells you, get away from me, I never knew you. It says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So you might read this verse and wonder, what is iniquity? Iniquity is sin. If you go to the NLT, it actually says it better. It says, I will say to them in that day, get away from me. You who broke, who broke God's commandments. So if you are a commandment breaker, you are not going to make it into the kingdom. And sin is breaking the laws of God. We all, if you think about, we're living in a land where we have to adhere to rules and regulations and instructions. We don't have a problem to follow those rules. Here COVID came, we have to wear masks. We have to sanitize. If you go into a mall or wherever, you have to do certain things. And we adhere to those rules. There was lockdowns where people were not permitted to go out, we adhere to those rules. Why is it so difficult when it comes to the rules of the, of the one person that you say you love, or the one individual that you say that you serve, or the one individual that you say you'll give everything to because he died for you on the cross? Why is it so difficult? It's not difficult. If you look at any of the commandments, Thou shalt not kill. It's not, it's not the difficult thing to not kill someone. It says thou shalt honor your mother and your father. There is even, it's a, such a, a, a simple or easy thing to do. Any commandment, there's no commandment that is too difficult to keep, but we refuse to keep them. We all call ourselves saints. Go with me to the book of Revelations uh, 14 and we'll start at verse 12. It says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Yahweh Shai. So you have to do both. Remember James said that faith without works is dead. So if you don't apply faith with the works, which is keeping those commandments, <clears throat> you're not going to make it. You're going to find yourself on the other side of the spectrum. We need to come back to keeping the law, statutes and commandments of the Most High God. That is what sin is. The Bible is clear. We don't have to guess what sin is. We don't have to wonder or ask somebody what sin is. That is what sin is. Sin is not keeping the commandments of the Most High. So I'm going to end right there. I just wanted to get to the point. So. Again, thank you for joining if you made it to the end of this um, video. Um, 
please do consider to like and to subscribe to my channel um, I'm gonna be doing quite a few of these I'm gonna keep it short and sweet but also want to get to the truth of the matter so I don't want to just go into um, my own thing I want to speak thus saith the Lord um, so with that Shalom.